my wonderful AP Statistics students. Welcome to another lesson in Unit 2, Exploring Two Variable Data. If you're new here, I'm Goldie, and I'm here to make AP Statistics easy for you. And we are in Notes 4 in Unit 2, which is going to be on residuals as well as residual plots. We're going to cover both of them today. So grab your notes, get settled in, and let's go through this content together. Residuals, let's talk about residuals. Um, so in most cases, and almost every case that we see at least too, no line is going to pass exactly through all of the points on a scatter plot, right? We make a least squares regression line and it's not gonna pass through every point, okay? We expect that. Um, we are using our least squares regression line to summarize the relationship between our x and our y, um, and we also use it to make predictions. Okay? So even though we know the least square regression line is not perfect, we still use it to make predictions about our y variable. Now, because it's not perfect, and because we still use it, there's going to be some error, okay? it's some natural error that occurs. Um, and because we use it to predict our y from our x, that error is going to be in the vertical direction, right? Since y is measured in the vertical direction, the error is going to be in the vertical direction. Now that error, okay, um, that error is what we're going to look at today. A good regression line makes those vertical deviations, those vertical errors, as small as possible. Okay? Remember our method of least squares regression is to take those vertical distances, square them, and then minimize the minimize that sum, okay, that was least squares regression. So our least square regression line makes those vertical distances as small as possible. What is that vertical distance? Well, it's a residual, okay? It's that vertical distance between the observed value of the response and the value predicted um, by the regression line. So uh, the formula for it, we actually don't have a symbol for residual. We just call it residual. Um, but the formula for it is taking the observed value minus the predicted value, or y minus y hat. y being the original data point y value and y hat being the predicted y value. Okay? If the residual is positive, that means the observed point lies above the regression line. And if it's negative, that means it lies below the regression line. Uh, remember, if you actually add up all the residuals, you do get zero, okay? Uh, which is why the method of least squares regression involves squaring the residuals and then adding them all up to minimize that value, okay? So that's just a fun fact. I just like fun facts, throwing them out there. Um, adding up all the residuals in a, um, in a data set is going to give you zero. Love it. Right. Let's look at our example. We've gone through this example before. We actually made our least squares regression line by hand um, earlier to, um, to fit this data. So to remind you, X represented the student grade that they got in class, and Y represented the grade, the grade they gave the teacher on their evaluation. Okay. So this is what it looks like, and we got the least squares regression line to be Y hat equals, and then the negative 29.27 plus 1.338x. Now our question that we're going to answer, what is the residual for a student who got a 68 in the class and what does this value mean? Okay. So this is a legitimate question that can be asked usually in the AP exam multiple choice, but it could also be a free response question. So we want to make sure we're able to um, find this value and interpret it well. Okay. So if a student got a 68 in the class, that represents our x. Now, if we go to our data, we see a student got a 68 in class. Um, they gave the teacher a 73 on the teacher's evaluation. Okay, So we're going to find the residual. We have the observed value already. Okay, We observed a 73. Let's see what our line predicted we would get. And to do that, we actually plug the 68 into our least squares regression equation. Plug the 68 in for x multiply it by 1.338, add the negative 29.27, and we would have predicted that the teacher evaluation would be y hat equals 61.714. Okay? Now to find the residual, residual is observed minus predicted. So we're going to take the observed 73, 
and we're going to subtract the predicted y value of 61.714. Okay. This gives us 11.286. And that's the residual. So fun. But we also need to determine what does this value mean. Okay. Well, if a student got a 68 in the class, the difference between the actual student evaluation and what the line predicts the evaluation will be is 11.286 points. That's a perfectly good explanation. It's not necessarily a script of how you have to interpret residuals each time. Um, you could have also said something about, you know, the um, because it's positive, that means that you observed a evaluation 11.286 points, I think this was points, points higher than the, the predicted teacher evaluation of 61.714. There's a few different ways you could interpret that, okay? But you got to know that that's what it means. It's positive because you observed, the observed point lies above the line um, and that a residual is a just a natural consequence of having a least squares regression line. We are going to get some error. We are going to get some differences. That's expected. Um, the predictions are just meant to be a guide. Okay. The next thing is residual plots. Okay, so now that we know residuals are and we can find them and interpret them, now we can plot them. Okay, because why wouldn't we want to do that? It sounds like a good time. Okay, a residual plot, the reason we have it, it makes it easy to study all of the residuals at once by plotting them against the explanatory variable. So a residual plot finds every residual and plots it against the x values. Okay, and it helps us assess whether a linear model for the data is going to be appropriate or not. So in our example, I created a residual plot right there. So this is finding the residuals like this one. Uh, at 40, we found this residual. It's negative. It actually ends up being close to a negative 15, and that's that point right there. Okay, this residual is it's very close to the line. Okay, there it is there. Okay, so every point you find the residual and you create a residual plot. So the residuals go on the y-axis, but notice how your x-axis doesn't change at all. Okay, your x-axis doesn't change. It's just the y-axis becomes your residuals. And essentially, visually, the residual plot turns the regression line horizontal, <laughs> okay? So if you can kind of visualize that, um, because a residual of zero means that the point was exactly on the line, okay? If there's no residual, the difference between observed and predicted um, was zero. That means they were the same value. So that's why a residual of zero, this line right here, represents our least squares regression line just turned horizontally. And I want you to kind of visualize that and hopefully you can see that. And the residual plot, it does magnify those vertical um, deviations from the line. And that makes it easier to see an unusual pattern um, to help us determine if a linear model is appropriate. So when we say an obvious pattern exists in a residual plot, the model we are using is not appropriate, okay? So one of the most obvious patterns that you are gonna see is a curved pattern, okay? This happens usually when you have an exponential um, equation, or exponential equation, exponential graph, okay? Exponential points. If your points follow an exponential model, at first, the correlation and maybe even the scatter plot, it might appear that a line can, can do a good job of making a prediction, but when you look at the residual plot, you see an obvious curved pattern here, okay? And when you see an obvious curved pattern, either way, you know, upward, downward, whatever it might be, it's an indication that the data is not going to be fitted to align well, okay? Another one is a fanning effect, okay? And you'll get this more with like a, with clusters, okay? If you have some sort of fanning effect where half the graph looks pretty good and random, but the other half is just way big deviations, right? It's another sign that a linear model might not be appropriate, okay? And there's other patterns. Those are the two you're going to see in this class, okay? So on the AP exam, you're expected to be able to interpret residual plots um, and understand and read them, okay? Will you have to make one by hand? No, no, because you would have to find the residuals by hand, and that is going to take a while. So you're not really going to be graphing them by hand, but you do know how to have to read them. 
Okay. And reading them is just understanding, okay, like this is a negative residual. You can approximate the value. And then looking at the overall pattern, you know, okay, if there's anything curved or anything weird, basically if it's anything non-random, okay. Residual plots should be random, okay. It just should look like random scatter. You, that's when you want a residual plot to have random scatter, and that's when it's going to be a good fitting line. Okay. If it doesn't have random scatter, it's not a good fit for a line. Okay. If you did want to make a residual plot on your calculator, um, the TI-84s, 83s, it will actually generate residuals automatically when you perform a lin reg. Okay. So when you run lin reg, whether it's number four or number eight, underneath your calculations, um, when you run those, It'll automatically create all the residuals for you, and it's stored in a list called Resid, which can be found under the List menu. Okay, so I have it brought up here on the screen. It's number eight on um, underneath all of the names for your list. Okay, so Resid stores the current set of residuals. So every time you run a lin reg, a new set of residuals is stored in in Resid. Okay. In order to draw a residual plot, you have to first enter your data, enter L1 and L2, um, your X values and Y values, and then you have to perform a lin reg. Okay. You can't just enter in your values and then think that residual is good. You have to perform a lin reg, and then your residual list will be populated. And then if you go to stat plot, and your X list should be L1, and your Y list is when you want to type in that resid list. Okay where you pull up this and you paste it right in here. Then when you click, um, and then remember you get the resid list by pressing second stat and then going down to, oh, excuse me, it should be number eight resid, okay? Then you get it appearing. And then you might have to zoom stat, but then you get this residual plot, okay? And then when you press trace, you'll get the X value and the residual. So the residual we did when X, when a student got a grade of 68, um, the residual we found, here it is. Okay. And that's represented by this point right here. Okay. So that's a good way to get the residual plot and then to also see all the residuals too. You can trace and click through and you can see all the residuals for the X values. Okay. All right. And that's all you got to know about residuals and residual plots, okay? So if you're still with me, thank you so much for following along with this set of notes. Um, if you have liked this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great AP statistics content. But until then, I wish you endless statistical success, and I will see you in the next video.